How are you? Okay. Andrew, can you hear me? Oh, welcome, Evanson. So you've just joined. Okay, uh, time is time for us to start now. So I just want to welcome all of you, and I wish to ask Ethan Jao to unmute and start us off with a word of prayer. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you, Peter. Yeah. Let us hope. Okay? God Almighty, we come before you. We are pleased with thy holy name because you know our foundation, O Lord. You can see the desires of our heart. We are ready to understand and to know things so that we have a foundation with the knowledge and understanding, O Lord. We are looking forward for the coming generation that they, they have the foreknowledge, how they can be able to maneuver their life and they will be better readers. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Peter. Leaders, I welcome you to our day one of cohort five. We had an open day last week, and uh, today we are beginning our lessons. Uh, today we expect to have an overview, and then uh, we, we run through lesson one and lesson two as we start off on a high note. So thank you for all of you who have made it on time. We will not wait for the others. We expect them to join us, but we shall be recording. Actually, we are already recording. So we can share with them later whoever will have missed. And uh, even for those of us who are here, it will be a good opportunity to always go through it because every time you listen to the presentations, you learn things deeper. You pick things which had bypassed you during the lesson. So, Karibu Nisana. I wish to welcome our chairman uh, to take us off from there. So, Karibu Chairman Joseph Gary Mburu, take it on. Thank you, Reverend Kahindi. Uh, good evening, leaders. Good evening to you. Good evening. Yeah, we are pleased to have you on board. Uh, it's our joy to sit uh, and discuss issues of leadership with the leaders. Uh, this is where our passion is. This is where our hearts uh, feel rejuvenated. Every time we have such kind of sessions with the leaders, we feel that uh, we, are, we are investing in uh, people who have a stake in terms of how things operate, in terms of how organizations run, and uh, beyond that, how a country uh, runs. And uh, we believe that uh, investing in leaders, it's investing for now and even for generations to come. So it's our privilege, it's our honor to have you with us. And uh, maybe probably since this is our first day, uh, I will wish maybe we just have, a, we, we are not so many. Uh, I think others are still joining. And since you joined early, we can have uh, the opportunity just to say hi, uh, your name, and uh, maybe your, where you're joining us, and probably the organization, and any other details that you may want to share with us. It's, it's a learning process, and it's also a moment of uh, networking, and just to get to know each other uh, well. So I'll kick on with uh, Peter Njau. Uh, kindly continue. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, Njao, we can hear you. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Njao. Okay, let me move on to uh, Milka Mbinya. Can you hear, hear me? Yes, can I can I, hear. Uh, Karibu sana, just uh, your name and uh, probably uh, where you work or, or your organization you run and many okay. other Karibu. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Milka Mbinya and uh, 
Actually, I'm working at Net Plan Dental Surgeons as Dental Assistant. I'm employed. And uh, now I'm just joining you to learn. To learn. Oh, uh, someone is talking. That is why I'm getting disturbed. Um, so it's okay. I'm ready to learn with you. Be blessed. Thank you so much, Milka. Uh, we are also ready to share and pour as much as we can. Uh, Gatoni, Alex, Karibu. Gatoni, Alex, can you hear me? Okay, uh, Isaac Erim, if, if you can't, uh, if you're having challenges with the communication, please just use a text message, just indicate your name and uh, probably where you're joining us from and the organization, we shall also read that as we continue. Isaac Erim, Eriyama, Isaac Eriyama. Isaac Eriyama. Okay. Uh, Are you me? No. Welcome, Isaac. Yes. Thank you, uh, Isaac Iriama, working with Kana County Government as a well supervisor, but also uh, a church elder at Cornerstone Ministries International. Um, I'm really pleased to, to be part and parcel of this uh, leadership, uh, global leadership training. Uh, because I want, because in me, I know I uh, have the potential of being a leader. And inside me, I know I'm a leader. And as with learning, it will strengthen and equip me to lead in the church and to lead in the organization that I'm to, to, in, the, in the wells where I'm working. So I know I will get a lot of knowledge because. Uh, those who saw that this leadership training will equip us and also we will help. Uh, okay, thank you, Isaac. I think uh, we've lost you. Uh, let, let me move on to, I believe this is uh, Reverend Evans Ngugi. Karib Sana. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm uh, the senior pastor at Deliverance Church, Sabesi. And I'm also in charge of uh, an, a CBO called uh, Youth Empowerment Center, where we want to empower the youth to become very useful people in the community and also to transform the community. So I thought this course is going to be of great help to me, and I am looking forward to be equipped. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend. Uh, Isaac, uh, thank you for uh, you joining thank us you. from Turukana. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Pastor Lucy Kinyanjui, Karibu. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let me move on to Andrew. Andrew Ashira. Andrew Ashira, kindly unmute and uh, proceed. Okay, I know we are using technology, so we'll have, if you have some hitch, please feel free to use your, uh, the, the text, just send a text message. Uh, we'll be able to get back to your messages. Annie? Annie, can you hear me? Please unmute and uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes, Annie, we can hear you. You can hear me. Oh, great. So my name is Annie Nyambura. 
Um, <laughs> I work with children, I'm a Sunday school teacher. That's my, yeah. but, but I'm also a writer. I run an online publication it's called um, The Fire Tribune. It's a fire industry publication. Um, I've also recently written a children's book. It's not been published yet, but I'm speaking in faith that it will be published and many more will be born out of it. Um, as a Sunday school teacher, I am hoping that I will be able to um, become an effective leader. And beyond even that, even in the marketplace, I am praying that I'll be able to use my talents, my energy, and my opportunities um, so that I can be able to be an effective leader. So that when the last day comes and the Lord asks me, what have you done with your life? I'll be able to proudly say, um, I have used my time, my energy, my opportunity, my talents, and also been an effective leader in, that, in those areas. So I'm looking forward to uh, this training and um, I'm, I'm really excited to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Annie. Uh, Rosina, Pastor Rosina. Uh, if you can hear me, please uh, introduce yourself. I can also see Lillian, uh, but uh, I think it's still connecting. So allow me just to... It's still connecting. Okay. okay, Pastor Rosina, Karibu. Okay, uh, okay, how are you all of you? My name is Pastor Rosina. I'm just joining actually. Nilukon and Meset Nikaika and Mengia. But I think we are just in production part of it. So my name is Pastor Rolina Amska, and I'm going to be here also. Yeah, that's what I can say. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Rosina. Good to have you on the road. Uh, Paul Musheke, <laughs> you're welcome. Kindly unmute and introduce yourself. Hello. Hello. Karibu sana. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, my name is Paul. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, my name is Paul Musheke. I am one of the others in Deliver Church deliver Hawaii. And I'm uh, also the director of children's ministry, both in the sub region and also in the local church. Yeah. Asante uh, sana. Okay. Yeah, I'm also a senior citizen, sure. <laughs> karibu, karibu. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good to have a yeah. citizen with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm excited to join the program because when I'm made to touch lives of young people. Amen. And uh, plan also discipleship ministry. Mm. As I also age and uh, make a difference during my time, sir. True, true. Yes. Asant, we look forward to uh, also learning from you as we exchange. Uh, this will be very Thank interactive. You, and uh, we yeah. are glad to have you on board. Karibu sana. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Lillian, can you hear me? Okay. So, for the interest of time, I will request... Uh, uh, let me have uh, Reverend Beth uh, introducing herself as we close that chapter. Reverend Beth Waweru, Karibu. Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me? Yes, uh, Reverend. Thank you. Well, I'm excited this evening. Yeah, I'm just excited. And I thank God for everyone who is in this team. Karibu Nisana, this is a place that uh, at the end of it all, you'll be glad that you joined. And at the end of it, you'll say, yes, it was worth it all. There are certain things that all of you will learn, each one of you will learn. And you realize, uh, I think I was going this direction, now I'm headed to this direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Chairman, or Mwalimu, Joseph, God bless you, and our team. 
Thank you, the alumni. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have a few alumni on board. Reverend Kahindi is alumni. You can just uh, wave. Reverend Kahindi, uh, cohort three. Uh, we have uh, Peter Njau, cohort three. We have Reverend uh, Beth, cohort three. Yeah, next to me here, there is Rebecca, uh, cohort three. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's uh, kick on. Uh, let's kick on. I will uh, run through a brief inter uh, overview for the interest of those who missed our first uh, session, uh, just to have uh, a glance of uh, what this program entails. And uh, we want to be interacting with you so if you have uh, those who have not introduced themselves, please feel free to share your name and uh, where you are joining us from on the text message. And then uh, if, you, if you have a comment, if you, you have a takeaway provided uh, as, as we move through the overview or even the, uh, the lessons, you are free to use the chat platform, uh, share any message that uh, you feel uh, you, we need to uh, we need to, to catch all of us. So just feel free to share uh, and then uh, we'll kick on. We'll be checking on the platform and I uh, will keep on engaging with you uh, where we, we need to bring on board. Otherwise, uh, let me move on. Today, we, we hope to catch, to, ca to cover two lessons. We normally start at the peak because uh, we believe as leaders, uh, time is of essence. And uh, this one hour and 30 minutes, we want to maximize it. And we want to make sure you also have value for your time and also value in terms of uh, becoming a better leader, uh, having spent this time with us. So we start at the peak. Uh, we'll stretch you a bit. Please feel free. Uh, even our senior citizen, please feel free. If we stretch you, uh, we know the capacity is still yep. there. And then mm -hmm. you can be able to stretch a little bit more. Uh, so uh, we are, this is a, the course we are calling it Global Leadership uh, Masterclass. And uh, we are focusing on uh, becoming a global leader. And the mindset of a global leader is that uh, you think global, you lead local where you are, and you transform the world. In other words, we are saying uh, wherever you are, uh, some of you who have mentioned you are running CBOs, some of you are in business. We, we, are, we are talking about uh, looking and having a bigger picture on whatever we are doing, wherever we are. And even the people that we are mentoring, uh, those who are coming up, want to give them a bigger picture so that they can look at uh, probably extending their products, extending their services, not just within the local, but the local is also very important. So we are thinking global, uh, lead local, transform the world. This is our slogan. Uh, this is uh, like our motto. You need to keep on remembering this as we continue. So that is the first thing that uh, I want us to catch uh, so that uh, we, as we get into becoming global leaders, it's about thinking global, it's about leading local, it's about compounding our impact in terms of transforming the world. And we believe, our philosophy or our belief is that a better leader is a better life. The better you are a leader, the better your life becomes because you are able to maximize the power and the potential in you. You're able to lead yourself. And a better leader, it's a better family. A better leader is a better community, is a better business. It's a better nation and it's a better world. So if looking at this, you will see that uh, uh, all of us will be looking at where you are, and uh, this knowledge will not just be at the organization level, it will also be at the family level, at the individual level. So you capture the information and, and customize based on where you are and your sphere of, uh, uh, of, of, of responsibility uh, so that you can be able to customize in whatever aspect you want to apply the knowledge. Our belief is that uh, we are equipping leaders who will equip leaders. And we are equipping to influence generations. So our thinking is generational. And this is why we feel that uh, 
we are here to pass. We are here to learn, pass, learn, pass, because it's about a generation. It's not about the individual. It's about the bigger picture of uh, impacting generations. So we have had a brief on introduction. So I just want to move on to the overview of Global Leadership Masterclass. That was just the, 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 to give you an understanding of what Global Leadership Masterclass is or Global Leadership Network and our thinking or our philosophy. Uh, but now I want to get into the deeper aspect of this so that we can be able to understand. So I look at three issues or three areas, why this course is important, uh, look at what we, it entails. I'll also look at uh, who is eligible and also in terms of when and where we conduct it. And some of them I'll not emphasize because they are already, we are already in need. So why are, is this course important? One, I want to start with a quote by J. John F. Kennedy. Uh, this is what he said, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. So the more, the moment we get into leadership, or the moment you are leading, uh, then learning is part and parcel of you. That is how we keep on adding value and becoming better leaders. So a leader cannot lead without knowledge. Knowledge is one of the main pillar uh, of uh, successful leadership. And also we're talking about skills. And more important, we're talking about the attitude or the desire to learn and continue learning in order to maintain that uh, freshness of leadership. And a leader is a lifelong perpetual learner. And great leaders are lifelong learners. They view learning as an endeavor. They need to commit. They commit to this on a daily basis. So learning is continuous. Uh, this is the, why we appreciate that. As much as we are in position of uh, leadership, we need to keep on investing more and more in ourselves, and this is through learning. Uh, Michael Angela at age of 87, he said, I am still learning. 87 years old and he's still learning. So uh, this is a challenge that uh, we felt we need to embrace it and also to be able to pass it over to the leaders that will be working together with us. So why is this course important? We appreciate the rapid change and constant transition that is happening around us. And leadership is becoming very complex. We're dealing with a generation uh, who are very informed, a generation that uh, is also very instant, uh, a generation that uh, uh, their, their thinking is very different. And therefore, with this kind of transition and uh, the rapid change that is taking place, then we need to invest more in ourselves because this is becoming a more challenging task and it needs a lot of flexibility, a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, uh, dynamic uh, thinking so that we can be able to cope. So change is becoming the norm. Currently, we are in a change season. We are in, tra in a transition season, uh, courtesy of COVID-19. A lot is happening around us in our organization, at our personal life. And I think this is really key for us to be able to, uh, to, 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 uh, to contextualize and just appreciate that it, this is a message, it's an alarm to us as leaders, that change is becoming the norm. Some of this change is very disruptive. It is unpredictable, and some of it comes in form of crisis. But at the end of the day, people will be looking at us as leaders. So we are confronted by change. We are going through a time of transition. What worked last year or a few years ago, now probably is not working. How do we think and how do we move forward? Uh, so leaders, we have no choice but to adapt. The main uh, part of the message that I want you to appreciate today is the issue of adapting. We have to adapt. We have to innovate. We have to learn and learn and help others to adapt. Yeah, some of the strategies that we have been probably employing, some of them need to adapt to the new uh, environment and the new uh, the new environment that we are in now. So leadership responsibility today feels extreme. I'm sure probably all of you can attest to this. It's a bit extreme. It's a bit extraordinary. But above all, it's the pivotal uh, anchor. It's the anchor. If we're going to have a better life, 
if you're going to have a better family, if you're going to have better uh, citizens, a better country, it's all about leadership. Uh, John Maxwell said, everything rises and falls on leadership. So we appreciate this. Uh, we appreciate the key role of leadership. And at the same time, we appreciate that the change that is coming in uh, how to lead, it is provoking us to invest more on ourselves. So uh, to remain a credible leader, I must always work fast, hardest, and longest on changing myself. This is neither easy nor natural, but it is essential. These are words of John C. Maxwell. And I'm just uh, pointing this out because I know in this journey, as we embark on these 12 weeks, uh, it's not going to be that easy because it's going to disturb our comfort in a way. And uh, a, lot, a few shifts here and there, resources and many other things, but knowledge comes at a cost and uh, that is how we become uh, better. So though, Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the future are not those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. It's about living in a, a dynamic world and becoming a dynamic leader, a leader who can be able to know when do I need to unlearn and relearn. And uh, John, Max, John Wesley said once in seven years, I burn all my sermons. For it is a shame if I cannot write better sermons now than I did seven years ago. So to us as leaders, uh, this is also a message that is coming to us in terms of how the, sh the shift is affecting us. How, uh, how the strategies that we have employed probably uh, seven years or a few years ago, and uh, probably we are, still, uh, uh, we are still enclosed on them, some of them might not yield that much uh, impact. And therefore it calls for a review, it calls for a rethinking, it calls for uh, critical analysis. Are we getting the maximum output of this? So that as John, John Wesley said, if they are not helping us, then we need to be able to identify what can work in our context. So a leader should keep his head in the clouds, but feet on the ground. We always encourage our leaders that uh, let us be ahead in terms of uh, where are we going in terms of the vision, in terms of uh, investing in ourselves, in terms of giving direction, but also let's work together with the people. It is said that people do not, no, do not care how much you know until they know how much we care. So we need to be ahead, but at the same time, we need to be the foot soldier working together with our leaders. So uh, in terms of uh, the why, personal development is critical success factor in leadership success. If you are to be a successful leader, if I, I have to be a successful leader, this is anchored on how much I, can I, I am investing in myself and the quality of the investment. Uh, the, more, the better the quality, the better the leader. The more I focus on building myself, probably I'll end up becoming a better leader as we move on. Uh, John Maxwell said, leadership ability is always the lead on personal and organization effectiveness. If a personal leadership is strong, the organization lead is high. But if it's not, then the organization is limited. So as a leader, we set the lead. We are the pace setter. The more we grow, we create space. We create space to be able to stretch us, to stretch others up and to open up opportunities. If you're running a business, probably the more you invest in yourself, you are the lead of that business. It cannot grow beyond you. So uh, the more you grow, it means the more you'll be able to scan for your uh, opportunities, the more you'll be able to stretch, you'll be able to think global and uh, you'll be able to be a more effective uh, leader wherever you are. So personal development, very important, but to add value to others, we must add value to ourselves. We need to add value to ourselves for us to be able to add value to others. And this is the essence of this session, just to be together so that we can be able to build each other, add value to ourselves, and then make others also get this value. Have usefulness to add to ourselves and to others. Being able to teach a new skill, Probably after today, we can be able to get a few uh, 
a few concepts that we can be able to share with our leaders wherever we are. A new skill that you can be able to bring on board. A freshness of strategies, ideas, and creativity. Uh, being able to scan the opportunities and uh, be able to lead the people that we are leading to ask those opportunities. Why this is very important is something we call self-care. Self-care is a critical success factor in leadership. To care for others, I have to care for myself. As I said, when we were opening, our hearts are with the leaders. And we know the responsibility that is on our shoulders. And uh, sometimes we all feel that we need to pause. Sometimes we all feel that we are strained. And uh, therefore, in this kind of environment, it's all about us as leaders and engaging, learning, and being able to uh, open up and see how do we become better as we lead the people that we are leading. You can't give what you do not have. We want you to get and be grounded, and therefore we'll be able to be better leaders wherever we are. Uh, Yurin Auburn said, my secret to success is making sure that my cup is full so I can pour into my team, my organization, and my industry. If we have a cup that is full, we have something to pour out. And uh, we believe that as we go through this program, your cup will be refilled. Your cup of knowledge, your cup of skills, your cup of network, your cup of collaboration will be refilled so that we can be able to pour out. It will be a moment of pausing, uh, refueling, uh, re-energizing, probably refocusing our, 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 our leadership uh, based on the vision and also relaunching. We believe that at the end of the day, there will be a moment to be able to relaunch. Uh, if you have been on, a, on board a plane, there's normally a message that is uh, uh, broadcasted on safety measures. And uh, this is how the message reads, as you can see on your screen. In the event of an emergency, put your own oxygen mask on first. Each time this announcement is made, to me, I always try to resonate with the leadership because I can't be able to build others unless I've been able to refresh and build myself. So uh, put your mask first so that you can be able to be of help to others. If we don't first take care of ourselves, how can we take care of others? In a way, it might look like it has, it's a, a selfish statement, but it's a statement that saves life, especially when it comes to the emergency in the flight. Because if my mask is on, I have the oxygen to be able to help another person uh, put their mask on and also save a life. So as we invest in ourselves, it's a way that we are also uh, equipping us to give value to the people that we are leading. So uh, we are focusing on uh, the forces of a global leader, uh, competency in terms of skills, in terms of knowledge. We are looking at clarity in terms of vision, uh, character in terms of integrity, and conviction in terms of purpose and importance. So we'll be revolving around these, these uh, forces in the entire program. So we'll be uh, looking at them in details as we move on. Uh, purpose statement, uh, for those who have the manuals, uh, if you have your manual with you, if you have your manual with you, I'll request you to check on page uh, So let's check your page three, page three. So if you have your manual with you, kindly let's go to page three. Okay, are we there? So page three, we have our purpose statement. And I think we are, we are looking at the critical role of leadership, no, um, is vital to champion transformational reforms than leadership. And if there is an area to invest in, it's this area of leadership. It's the anchor. While a nation or an organization resources might determine its potential, it is the leadership that ultimately unlocks that potential and determines the success level of the nation, organizations, and its people. 
So this is really critical. Uh, looking at the national level, looking at even you as an individual. Some people are very, uh, they, they are rich in terms of endowment, in terms of resources, in terms of talent. But how do I lead that potential out? How do I maximize that potential? It's all about leadership. That's why we try to cascade it down to the individual level. And therefore, uh, our, the purpose of this program is to be able to empower individual, empower leaders, uh, so that they can be able to uh, become better and at the same time empower others. We are, an we are anchoring every, uh, all this in 2nd Timothy 2.2. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. So whatever we are sharing here, at the end of the day, it's a message that will be able to, uh, to be echoed to others, a message to be shared with the people that we are leading wherever we are. And uh, our objective is to sharpen each other and more so sharpen our students because we believe that if the ax is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Uh, you can look at that scripture. So it's about making uh, leaders more sharper in terms of the content that we're going to share. And uh, through that, we can be able to have or employ what we call the 28 principle where you are using little strength, but you're having more impact and more transformation. So we want to really sh uh, have everybody appreciate that leadership is everyone's business. And that through this, we can be able to synergize and compound our impact, impact and transformation. So the structure uh, for now, we have adopted uh, uh, the eight weeks, uh, which because of the open day and a few other arrangements, we normally pull them to 12 weeks. But at the same time, you can still run this program for five days, consecutive days, uh, consecutively. But for now, this is the model that we, we have adopted. So uh, we, the, the package, we have the Becoming a Global Leader Manual. We also have the book review. We'll be giving you the chapters that we need to read together uh, within the week. And then, uh, will uh, share the, 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 the view and the summary in our groups. As we move on, we'll be able to share more of that information. We also hope that we can have a retreat or exchange program or even a study tour, probably to a country that we feel is a model in leadership. Those are some of the issues that we can discuss. There is a final project and there is an online evaluation that comes at the end. In terms of the cost, Nothing of value comes without a cost. And uh, if you get something of value without a cost, probably we may not be able to appreciate it that much. So there is a cost in terms of time. There is a cost in terms of finances. There is a cost in terms of the authenticity. The program requires in-depth sharing of personal experiences in leadership and uh, even at a personal level. Uh, relationally, we will also uh, be able to share our personal experiences also. So uh, vulnerability in terms of opening uh, our lives up, but uh, it's for the benefit of maximizing the opportunity. So the entire course we have, uh, uh, we have uh, accumulated to 4,500, including the manual and the two books. And uh, you can be free to use the MPESA number that I've shared there. So Pay in terms of your capability. You can, if you're able to pay in wholesome or in installments, uh, we are open to any method that you feel you are okay with it. My commitment uh, on a, we have on a page seven, page seven in the manual. Page seven. Page seven. My commitment, uh, you can read those uh, commitments that we uh, are written there. Just think about them. We are looking in terms of time. We need to be on time in terms of preparedness. If we need to do the reviews, we need everyone to have done the reviews, uh, share personal experience, respect and honor opinions, uh, open to change, and also commit to share the knowledge. So those are some of the commitments that we 
we, we, we require uh, all of us to commit and then you can write your name and uh, today's date and then you can sign you can sign there uh, in your manual so just think about that and recap that as we move on program schedule i will share this uh, on the chat on the on the whatsapp platform so that you can see how we have spread the program uh, already 25th is gone uh, today we are on first uh, so we'll be finishing by november 3rd okay book review every week we have allocated some chapters i'll also share this uh, so that you can note the chapters that we will read starting from uh, today when we we finish this program then immediately we need to embark on book review which we need to submit by by uh, next week on monday at 10 pm but we'll indicate those details as we move on okay so we hope that uh, each and every one of us through this program we can be able to write a great story uh, i look at this as a, a book i look at this as a book titled mm -hmm. the greatest story ever told and the good thing is that this story is not yet finished it's not yet concluded it's not yet written in full and this story is not about someone else but it's about you our challenge is that we picture our journey at the very end and then we come down and document it and put it down in writing and see how will that story be this program will challenge us to do a lot of reflection uh, a lot of uh, uh, rethinking a lot of reprioritization we look at what have i prioritized is it really the key issue uh, as i look at the end of the story and read backward so we're looking at the greatest story ever told and this is what we'll be provoking you to write as we move on in the sessions so uh that was the overview that was the overview and maybe i can just uh, pause for five minutes uh, allow reverend uh, kahindi just to check if there is uh, any uh, messages on the chat are there any contributions uh, maybe those who joined us late, if they have introduced themselves, you can still mention something from the chat. Karibu. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, from the chat, I see someone who apologizes for coming late. That this is uh, George Odori. George, Karibu Sana. Uh, I see no other comment on the chat. Uh, but let me just take this opportunity to welcome the ones who came in late. We won't give you the time to introduce yourselves now. But I see um, Lillian is now on board, Simon is on board, Pastor Stephen and uh, George are on board. Karibuni Sana Matwendele. Chairman, over to you. Unmute, unmute. So thank you, Reverend Kahindi. Good. Uh, I trust we are we are together. Uh, feel free to share any comment. If something touches you so much and you feel you need to share it, just put it on the chat. Uh, put it on the chat. We'll be able to to look at it as we move on. Okay. So let me go to. Uh, we, I'm getting to lesson one, but I'll do a, a little bit of preliminary before getting to that i this is our study method as we go through the program uh, scan for what you are learning in terms of what is new to you and those are probably the takeaway this is really new this is really something that i'm catching uh, or i'm hearing for the first time or in a new way in a new perspective something that you are learning look at what you need to apply probably as you get back to your organization next uh, tomorrow or you get back to wherever you you want to apply that knowledge something that you are feeling i need to pick this i need to run with this immediately in terms of how do i apply look for application change what do you need to adjust as a leader and finally what do you need to teach what do i need to carry uh, maybe to the teams that i'm leading to the board that i'm leading so our study method is called uh, LACT. 
select, learn, apply, change, and teach. Scan through for those particular areas as we learn through. And uh, successful leadership, we talk about uh, the triangle for success. How do you become a successful leader in terms of this triangle? What does this triangle talk about uh, in terms of successful leadership? So the triangle for success focuses on some areas. A successful leader is a knowledgeable leader, is a skilled leader, is a leader with the right attitude. And the skills, we look at very basic issues like goal setting, time management, reasoning, communication, and interpersonal skills. In terms of the attitude, we are, called, we are looking at, am I a self-motivated leader? Am I self-confident in terms of integrity, optimism, in terms of enthusiasm, cooperate, cooperation, and commitment? Knowledge, information, we are looking at diverse knowledge from the intellectual knowledge, uh, spiritual knowledge, uh, we're talking about uh, social uh, knowledge and man, many other aspects that are very important when it comes to, to knowledge. So uh, remember this, the triangle for success. As a leader, I need to ensure that I'm growing in, this, in all these areas. But we shall expound this as we move on. So success is dependent on your inner drive to achieve it. The inner drive to achieve it. We have embarked on a journey. And uh, it's my prayer that all of us will be able to get to the destination of this journey. So I'm, 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 I'm just uh, provoking you so that your inner drive uh, will be more ignited uh, and more activated, more robust to be able to keep on with the journey. As we stretch you more, you'll stretch. Uh, as we push you more in terms of a positive, uh, uh, a positive results, we'll be able to be elastic and be resilient. Consistent action will produce results. We want to emphasize that we, we really uh, emphasize that we need to attend all classes, all classes, unless there is something that is an emergency, which we can now look at it, but we emphasize that we look and we invest in all classes. Perseverance, very key the inner strength to get back into the battle after you have been wounded. Technology will give us challenges. Don't give up. Get back. If you, you have a challenge with a, a sound day, next week, try get back. Bounce back and keep on uh, moving. Get back into the battle after you have been wounded. So whatever difficulties we encounter, please let's uh, capitalize on the inner strength to keep on going. And uh, the difference between those who succeed or those who finish the course successfully, and those who do not, it is about perseverance. It's about resili resilience. It's about getting back, bouncing back, uh, being elastic. It's about uh, 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 being able to, uh, to adjust as necessary and to keep on with the pace. So this will be a journey that will distinguish us. Uh, this is another triangle of success. And this triangle of success, it talks about the base. The base is where everyone is. It's a, the base is where maybe people who are so much in comfort are. But as you move up the, at the peak, the, 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 the triangle is uh, more, it's a bit narrow. And there are few people who are able to get to the top there. Those people who maximize today, uh, people who believe that today matters, people who are planters, people who are, they focus on, growing in a particular area, people who are resilient and who persevere. In the inside the triangle, there are a number of attributes that are very important for you to be able to shift uh, at any level you are and get to the peak. And those who are already at the peak, these are some of the attributes that we have developed in terms of success uh, habits, in terms of growth, plan, perseverance, as I've mentioned, uh, strategies, knowledge, and a few other issues that have been mentioned there. Our hope is that at the end, those two guys up there, it will be you. One of them or both of them will be the people who have gone through this program. And uh, I want to believe that we can all commit to ensure that we are the people who will get up there. Now with that done, let's get to lesson one. Uh, lesson one, 
Uh, we are now on page on page eight. <clears throat> on page eight, if there is any comment, any clarification, any uh, any challenge you are experiencing, the platform is open. Platform is open. Uh, please keep on interacting with the platform, and then we'll be able to look at it. So we are on page eight. And I will open with the words of Maxwell again, true measure of leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. But influence starts or begins with self-influence or self-leadership. It, it starts at the base, and then it moves to the corporate, moves to the national, it moves to the global, where we are now looking at. And through, it's through inspirational leadership that is driven by purposeful action. So leaders, they positively influence themselves and the world around them to drive positive change. And uh, this is uh, one aspect that I've been appreciated by many leaders. Uh, Nelson Mandela said, I, until I changed myself, I could not change others. This is why we are saying self-care is important. Uh, Self-growth is important. It helps us uh, to become better, to be transformed, and then we are able to compound the transformation and to be able to uh, push it out to other people out there. So until a leader leads self, then we cannot be able to lead others. So in this, uh, in this lesson, we are looking at uh, a, few, a few aspects that are very key when we talk about leadership, a few definitions. And uh, the few definitions, we have categorized them into six I's, but in your manual it is indicated five I's and one T of leadership. Six I's and one T of leadership. When you're talking about leadership, these are some of the aspects that uh, will always be repeated. Either they will be repeated in terms of trying to define a leadership or trying to become that leader that uh, is transformational out there. We'll be looking at that, some of these key aspects. What are the aspects? So. Uh, on your manual, on your manual, page eight, page eight. So let's uh, all go to page eight. You can see there are some blank spaces there. Yeah, you can see blank spaces. Pastor Lucy, how are you? Okay, so those blank spaces. I'm very Karibu sana. You're welcome, Pastor Lucy. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, so let me give you the the what what you need to fill in the blank spaces. The first one is influence. First one is influence. The second one is inspiration. The third one is impact. Yes, I'm hearing you. Karibu sana, we can also hear you very well. Yeah. Yeah, so we are on page eight. We are filling the blank spaces on yeah. our menu. I trust we are together. Okay. And then the fourth one is integrity. The fifth one is integration. And then the sixth one, which is not in the manual, it is intelligence. Okay, so uh, the five eyes. We are talking about leadership is about influence. We influence <coughs> you. Inspiration, becoming an inspirational leader. We influence through the impact we make wherever we are. We influence through the life we lead in terms of integrity. We influence through integration, being part and parcel of the people that we are leading. And also we influence through intelligence, through growth, through development, through knowledge. So uh, we'll, this will inform the definitions that we'll be taking 
as uh, we now start looking at the details definition of, of leadership. Okay, and uh, the answers are at the back of the manual. So if you miss any any of this uh, uh, any of the words in the blanks, you can still go back at the end of the lesson and you'll be able to see them. So I'll unpack the word influence and then I'll post there. The word influence in this manual, in this course, we have unpacked it because we believe that uh, you will be hearing a lot about leadership is influence. But what is this influence? We have talked about you can influence through inspiration, through impact, through integrity, through integration, through, uh, through intelligence. And this is positive influence. But now we want just to unpack the word uh, influence, uh, just to give us a deeper understanding and also some of the concepts that we can use in terms of unpacking this uh, word influence. So the, the I in the influence, the I in the influence means or we have, it denotes inspirational inspirational. So inspire others through passion, motivated by vision and integrity. So it's about uh, inspirational, becoming inspirational. N is nurture. You can look at page eight. You should be able to grow others. You should be able to nurture others. Focus for fruitfulness. Focus your energy, resources for maximum impact and productivity. It's not about the activities that I'm doing only, but it's about how much impact am I able to bring on board? L is learning and listening. Learning and listening. Leaders are learners. Leaders are de active, deep listeners. So we need to remember that. As we talk in, about influence, L stands for learning and listening. U stands for understanding. Leaders care. Balance a soft heart and a hard heart. Soft heart, we mean I need to care as a leader and I also need to know, or I need to embrace the heart of courage. Uh, the best example I normally use here is the example of Jesus, uh, looking at the different scenarios he encountered. At the temple, he showed a different face because he, he required to take a drastic action and sort out the issue that was at the, at the temple. Look at him meeting the sick people you see another face of Jesus, a very caring person, a very a person that is able to integrate with, with the people and to be able to empathize with them. So understanding, have emotional intelligence, be able to care and also be able to know when to show courage. Emotional intelligence, that is E, uh, be sensitive uh, to the instincts and to people's need. And then N is navigate, leaders, they root. We don't lead by a map, we lead by a compass because things are changing and the compass will tell us how to be able to shift. It's not about being static, but it's about being dynamic. So we navigate, and steer the team towards the vision. And then C is communicate, leaders effectively communicate, share the vision, uh, direction and values. This is really core. Communication is core. We'll be handling this as a lesson on its own because it's one area that we need to really invest on. Uh, the moment we capture the vision, we need to be able to uh, share it out. And then E is exemplary. Lead by being a model. Model the way. We influence by becoming a model, by showing the way. They know the way. As leaders, we know the way, go the way, and show the way. They demonstrate leadership. They understand that leadership is a lifestyle. So uh, that's, the, that's what the acronym for influence. And I, I just hope you need to keep on reminding yourself on this and uh, be able to appreciate how heavy this word influence can be and how we need to really get into the depth of leadership. So today we're just setting the foundation and then we'll be able to get back as we move on. I'll conclude uh, on page, uh, page 10. Page 10. In every session, there is a leadership challenge. In every session, there is a leadership challenge. 
So, sorry, I missed one thing, the six I's and one T. One T is transformation. Six I's and one T of leadership. So the six I's, I've already talked about them, and one T is transformation. So we'll be getting back into the details as we move on. So I've just gone through this in the manual. Okay, so the leadership challenge, in every session there will be a leadership challenge just to think about and uh, digest. Uh, this, the six eyes or the five eyes in the manual are inspired on the following six core leadership principles. So this is just like a summary of what we shall be looking at in the manual. We'll be looking at the power of vision, the power of purpose, power of character, power of mentorship and succession, power of personal development, and power of effective communication in terms of becoming a better leader. So uh, this is the content that we'll be looking at and it's all anchored on the introduction that I've already taken you through. So leadership challenge, evaluate yourself based on the, uh, the five I's or the six I's and one T and identify areas for improvement. Rate yourself on a scale of one to five and draw an action plan on areas of improvement. So I'll share this slide uh, on the chat so that you can just uh, look at this and to be able to go through it at your own time. Just uh, internalize it, evaluate yourself and see which areas do I need to improve and what is my action plan in terms of improving those areas. Good, so let me pause there. Uh, again, we'll get to the chat as I hand over to Reverend Kahindi to take us through uh, lesson two and also to be able to see if there is any comments to be shared from the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chairman. I, I think he deserves a round of applause. So for those of you who are uh, um, analog like me, you will clap using your hands and the ones who are digital, you do it on the, chair, on the, on the, on the machine. So let's just give him a round of applause from where you are. Now, I'm not seeing people clapping. Oh, is it that there? Oh, okay, at least. George, thank you. Thank you. Simon Jezani, I think this is Pastor Peter. Thank you very much. Chairman, allow me to share my screen. Okay. Okay. I hope we are learning something. May somebody just unmute and tell me if uh, there is any learning going on. See where two chairman are to me oxygen bure. Somebody unmute and uh, tell me you are learning something. Evanson. Evanson is absent. Senior citizen, Paul. The chairman, seems like we are just the two of us. Pastor Peter, are you learning anything? Ah, uh, well, 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 I really thank God. This is, uh, I really, uh, I'm learning really great things. Yeah, some yeah. things that are uh, uh, actually I've gone through, but uh, I'm learning them again in a different perspective. So, great praise the Lord uh, for this uh, leadership uh, training. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, from the chat, somebody somebody was asking on uh, whether whether we the notes will be shared or whether the notes are in the manual because uh, she was saying like there was so much she was speaking and she was busy writing notes. As a matter of fact, quite some of the materials as uh, you, 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 you saw the chairman go through, we have it on the manual. However, the presentations are deeper. So some of the things being shared here are not in the manual. But uh, at the end of it, the presentation shall be shared with you. So you get the presentation. Also, the presentation is being recorded 
and in the next few days it shall be made available so you can go through it again and again. However, I encourage you to note down some of the things that uh, speak to you instantly because the moment, a moment of inspiration, if you let it go and wait for the presentation to be shared in two, three, four days or one month, it will pass you. There are some things that they'll speak to you and you just take a note and they say, I will do this or note down what you hear, okay? So that's what we picked from the, uh, from the chat. And I want us to go straight to lesson number two. Lesson number two is entitled The Leadership Gap. Leadership Gap. Uh, this is a justification, one of the justifications why we should have this course. Because there is a leadership gap. James Stock wrote and said, everyone can lead because everyone can serve. To him, leadership is a democratized role and it's just service. And if I may echo the words of Dr. John Stucco, who says, there are so many leaders, yet there's very little leadership. This means there are people with the title of being leaders, but the actual leadership is not expressed. No wonder you will hear of an MP who is representing a whole constituency, and then for five years he does not speak a word in parliament, yet his main role is to represent the people. I don't know whether you can do that one effectively by appearance and not by speaking. Coming to our situations, we also have offices and names, but uh, we need to give leadership as opposed to just being leaders, because that is a gap. In our World Economic Forum on the Global Outlook in 2015, it identified that lack of leadership is the number two global challenge that was facing organizations. Uh, many of the respondents, we have the numbers there on the screen, agreed that there, there, there existed a leadership crisis. And uh, the crisis or the shortcoming of the gap was in two, two states. One, there was lack of mastery of the required competencies. And two, there was lack of focus on the necessary skills. So you have somebody in office, but he has not mastered what he's supposed to be doing. So you have somebody in office, but he does not focus on the necessary skills. So the survey noted that businesses, government agencies, Educational institutions, they needed leaders who could effectively navigate complex and changing situations. So the leadership gap in today's leadership uh, is there is insufficient capacity to meet the future requirements. And the more, four most important future skills, which are amongst the weakest for today's leaders, are listed down here. The first one where as leaders we are weak in, and I am emphasizing as we because we must own the problem and the gap so that we can be able to challenge ourselves and cover that gap. If we sit pretty and pretend we are okay, but others are not, then we cannot improve. So we have weaknesses in inspiring commitment. If you have people under you, you expect to lead them, but you cannot inspire that commitment. Then you find you are struggling in your leadership and the organization cannot perform well, you cannot grow because we have weaknesses in inspiring commitment. Number two, we have a problem in leading employees. We find ourselves much more comfortable to let the employees do what they want, hoping they'll do it right. But we see like when you go to give them leadership, you'll see they are resisting. And of course, John Maxwell said, one of the reasons why leadership exists is so that people may not do what they want. Okay? And I, I think he was quoting from the Bible. 
because every time people were allowed to do what they want, things went wrong in, uh, in the times of the Israelites. So leadership exists that people may not do what they want. So we need to lead the employees, even in times when they don't feel it's very comfortable because the most comfortable part is to be left to do nothing and yet earn from it. Number three, we have weaknesses in strategic planning, coming up with strategies in uh, trying to achieve the goals and the purposes for the institutions. And number four, change management. Every now and then, regardless of whatever institution it is, you must change some things here and there. It's growth. Growth comes with change. Yes, you have grown a few months since January. And uh, if you might be sincere with yourself, a lot has changed. If you are still the same you were in January, then there is something that's not very correct. So those are the four weak, most weakest points in our, the competencies that we have. In inspiring commitment, in leading employees or subordinates, in, strat in strategic planning, and in change management. So to improve our leadership capacity, we needed to take both strategic and tactical approaches. And uh, in the survey of 2015, which I just quoted, five steps to help us bridge this were put down as follows. One, we need to perform a leadership assessment. On your manual, we're on page 13, eh? We're on page 13, so that we don't leave you behind. So step number one, you perform a leadership needs assessment. And then step number two, you create a leadership strategy. You create a strategy. Number three, you develop clear, specific goals and strategic and um, strategies for the individual development. Okay? And number four, you create systems. And then when you are done with that, number five, you need to evaluate whether everything that you've worked works well for you to make you achieve. And again, you perform a leadership needs assessment. You create leadership strategies, again, develop clear specific goals and strategies for the individual development, uh, create systems and evaluate. This is a continuous process. Why, as a chairman was presenting, he mentioned to you of somebody who said that every seven years he burns all his summons. Well, that means at some point he performed a leadership needs assessment and so like we need to do things better, created leadership strategies and uh, developed some clear specific goals and strategies uh, for the development and creating systems and evaluating. So you improve with that. And uh, as stewards of this present age, and this is the challenge for this lesson. As stewards for this present age, we must face the challenge of developing, training, releasing, and reproducing a generation who can secure this generation and next generation. We need to keep developing, training, releasing, and reproducing a generation of leaders. According to an African proverb where I come from, an army of sheep led by a lion will easily and always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. And a whole army of lions, but they are being led by a sheep, they will lose to an army of sheep who are being led by a lion. This it shows exactly how leadership is critical. And tomorrow's success is determined by today's investment in leadership. This cause gives us a way to invest, to build ourselves as leaders so that we can build others. We are sharpening the axe now 
so that when we go to cut the tree, we'll take a shorter time, we'll be much more effective. We need to build ourselves each and every day. Then we can build others. So reflect on the three questions from the above uh, mentioned survey. And these questions are on, uh, on uh, page 14 of our manual. So I'll ask you to go to page 14 of our manual. For those of you who have no manuals, I will read through the questions. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to say also remain behind in the chat so that we can uh, agree with you on how you can get your manual uh, in the course of the week so that you are not left behind. Question number one, what leadership skills and perspectives are critical for success now and in the future? Question number one is what leadership skills and perspectives are critical for success now and in the future? Then number two is how strong are the current leaders in these critical skills and perspectives? I repeat, number two, how strong are the current leaders in these critical skills and perspectives? Lastly, number three, how aligned is today's leadership with what will be the most important skill and perspective in the future? I repeat, how aligned is today's leadership with what will be most important skills and perspectives in the future? Those are the three questions which I, I am finishing with. Thank you very much. That's the end of lesson number, number two. And uh, before I hand over, let me just go to, to, to the questions or to the chat. Mm, the chat, Pastor Lucy is having an, an issue with the slide, with the side, or with her side. Uh, Pastor Steve, no, this is Odori. George says, I am inspired, motivated, and more enlightened. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. So be, uh, as I hand it over to the chairman, I'll ask you to put questions and the comments and whatever is your take home in what you have heard today, what is that one thing that is at the top of your mind? What is your take home now? What is that one new thing that you have learned? What has spoken to you in the many words you've heard and the main writings you've heard? Just put a comment there. Thank you very much. Over to you, Chair Chairman. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, we can clap for Reverend, either digital or whatever style. Uh, well done. <laughs> yeah, so we are warming up today. Uh, this is a warm up. Uh, next week, we are now getting into the real meat of the program. Uh, but we just wanted you to appreciate uh, the critical. Uh, the critical purpose and the critical uh, role that leadership plays. And uh, it's our prayer, it's our hope that uh, we, we, as we get deeper, we will now start seeing how intentional we need to really focus on issues of leadership, uh, intentional. Uh, we've looked at some of the strategies of uh, uh, trying to narrow that gap. Th this requires a lot of intentional uh, thinking about them, around them, and uh, seeing that wherever you are, uh, you wear the, 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 the cape of, of leadership. Uh, I always say that leadership is a lifestyle. I don't put it on and off when I need it. I, I put it on, and the moment I'm on, I'm on. I've seen a, a number of times when uh, our political leaders are caught in some other, uh, some other funny scenario, uh, they tend to say it was private, but the moment you are a leader, you are a leader. Wherever you are, you are wearing the cape of leadership, either in the house uh, or wherever you are. So uh, it's intentional. And I think uh, we just want to conclude there. Uh, please, we always emphasize that have a takeaway. Have a takeaway. Pick one thing uh, that you are running with from this uh, program today. I know there is a lot that we can 
we, we can write down, but there is one that is really critical, which you need to remember. So, and for you to remember well is to share it with other people on the chat. So I want to just inform you that we'll be starting our book review. Uh, you all received this book, uh, The Purpose Driven Leader. I'm sure probably all of you, uh, you, you already received this book. So we are starting our review in this book. And uh, this coming week, this coming week, we will focus on, uh, let me just mention that so that you can be able to prepare yourself. We'll focus on chapter one and chapter three. Chapter one and chapter three. So you skip chapter two. Chapter one and chapter three. Make a brief summary. Uh, maybe half a page or any other length, any length, depending with how much you, you, are, you, are, you, you are able to grasp and how much you you're able to summarize from those chapters. So make a brief summary uh, for chapter one and chapter three. And then that summary will be shared uh, on the email that I'm going to post uh, immediately after this. I'll post the email. You'll share your summary there by Monday at 10 p.m. Okay, so next week we're going to have, we're going to have breakout rooms where we'll be getting into smaller rooms, into smaller into smaller groups after the presentation. Uh, that is where we'll be able to engage more in those smaller groups. And the book review will be discussed during those sessions. So if you, 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 need, to, uh, you need to prepare so that you can be able to participate in the, in the discussions. So breakouts will start next week on Tuesday. Uh, book review will be submitted by Monday latest, 10 p.m. And again, we also uh, request that you review this manual, lesson one and lesson two, because we have not covered everything. We have just uh, highlighted a few areas. So for you to appreciate uh, the content that is there and uh, uh, the value, uh, it's good that you go back, review, uh, review lesson one and lesson two. From next week, there will be a self-evaluation form. There'll be a self-evaluation form. Uh, we, we expect you to evaluate yourself. So we'll be sharing that form. It has a few questions that we'll be responding to in every session. Yeah, and then uh, for the enrollment for this uh, class, we shared a link where we uh, required that uh, all of you fill your details uh, because at the end of the session, there'll be a certificate and other administrative issues. So we need, we need some details from you. So if you have not filled, I'll share that link again, but I'll indicate who has filled so that you don't fill twice. I'll indicate who has filled and then I'll share the link so that all of us can be at the same, uh, at the same level. Otherwise, I'm grateful uh, for your time and we are here to learn. And my takeaway for you is that uh, leadership Leadership is the lion. You are the lion and you need to give us, you need to give that direction. We need to uh, remember that, remember that proverb that has been shared. Uh, uh, an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. That is how critical leadership is. And uh, we need to embrace this and we need to be intentional so that we can make a change not just in our organization and in our times, but in more in generations to come. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Reverend Kahindi, probably you can just conclude as, as, we, as we stop. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much, Chairman. We have uh, some four minutes. We normally finish at 30. And I just want to, to, to pick a few of the take home here. Somebody has taken home this, that a group of sheep led by a lion can defeat a group of lions led by a sheep. Yes, uh, leaders are that critical. You, how sharp you are, you can make that organization a winner. Somebody says self-care. That if you cannot take care of yourself, how then are you going to take care of the others? Leadership starts with me. 
I'm really inspired. Thanks. Thank you very much, Isaac, for that. And uh, here, Pastor Stephen says, until I changed myself, I could not change others. Very enlightening. Thank you very much, all of you, for, uh, for coming on board timely. Prepare well for next session. Uh, as you can see, there's little time to cover a lot. Now, I'm picking somebody to pray for us. And my eyes are landing on you, Nyambura. Ani, Nyambura, please pray for us as we close this. And I wish all of you a very nice time. Ani, Ani Nyambura, please just unmute and pray for us. Thank you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We worship you and we exalt you, God, for bringing us together, even in this forum, oh Lord. Thank you for, for everything that we have learned today, O Jehovah God. I want to pray that, Lord God, as we put hard work into learning about being effective leaders, O Jehovah Father, a path-driven leaders, O God. I pray that, Lord God, our lives, O God, shall be reflective of that, O Jehovah Lord. We also want to pray that, Lord, you're going to be with each and every one of us, O Lord. We pray that, Lord God, you would enable us, God, to finish this program, O Jehovah Father. That, Lord, you'd bless the labor of our hands, O Jehovah God. And that, Lord God, you live and help us to grow, O Lord, in this area that we are studying in, O Lord. We bless you, God, for the facilitators, O God. We bless you, God, for each and every one of us who's learning, O God. We pray that, Lord God, you'd be with us today, even for the rest of the week and for the rest of the training, Jehovah Lord. As we um, go away, Lord, and into the night of the Hobba, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you'd be with us, Lord, and protect us by your blood. We pray for all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.